Custom aquarium stands are a huge money saver. In fact, every stand in this room was custom made by me. It saved me a whole bunch of money versus if I were to buy them, but not everybody knows how to make them. Some can be complicated and some can even be a bit more involved than others. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple DIY custom aquarium or terrarium stand. Now, I am going to be using this stand for my mantis enclosures as I have quite a bit of them and I need somewhere to put them. But this exact same technique can be applied for aquariums, terrariums, and really anything you need. So with all of that said, the first thing we need to do is go to the garage and take a look at the materials that you'll need. Okay, so we're now here in the garage. The first thing I wanna go over is the materials that you'll actually need to make this thing. Starting off with six of these eighth inch thick plywood pieces, followed by eight two by fours that are eight feet long. You also need a couple other things such as a paintbrush, drill and screws, and a nail gun or a staple gun with brad nails, and then either stain or paint, whatever you prefer. All this stuff you can find at most home improvement stores, but I get mine at Home Depot. And then again, if you don't have something like a nail gun or even a staple gun with the brad nails, you could just use nails and a hammer. That's pretty much all you're going to need for this. So with that out of the way, let's get to the project. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, first of all, is actually take the measurements of what you want. Now the dimensions of the stand that I'm making is going to be 48 inches tall, 40 inches wide, and 14 inches deep. But again, you can adjust those measurements however you want to get the stand that you need for your project. The first thing we're going to do is take one of our 2x4s and use a tape measure to measure to length. In my case, this is 48 inches. After measuring and marking for where to cut, bring it over to a saw. A circular saw works best in this instance, but you could also use a handsaw. However, it'll take a little bit longer and the cut won't be as clean. You could also use a table saw if you have one, but I find circular saws to be the best. Anyway, after double checking my measurements just to make sure that I know where to cut, I went ahead and cut the piece. Now that the first piece is cut, because these are a very strong support piece and basically the main part of the frame, we are going to need four of them. An easy way to get more of the same piece is to lay down another 2x4 and then set your pre-cut piece on top of it. Then line it up with the saw and cut along the edge. After that's done, go ahead and repeat this process a couple more times to get all four pieces. So with the four main pieces cut, the next thing I'm going to do is work on the width pieces, or the pieces that go across the stand and also hold the shelves on top. Now the easiest way to do these in the way that I'm going to do it is starting off by measuring the piece. Now again, as I said earlier, the width of mine is going to be 40 inches, however I want to go 3 inches down to 37. And the reason for this is because this piece will be in between the two other pieces, and 2x4s have a thickness of exactly 1.5 inches. Therefore accounting for this thickness and cutting the piece a little bit smaller, putting it in between the other two pieces will give me a length of exactly 40 inches. Once you've calculated your measurements, go ahead and cut the piece to size. Before moving on to cut the rest of the pieces, I like to do a little bit of a test fit, as well as make sure that the piece is the correct length. I start by assembling everything together, and then go ahead and measure it. As you can see here, a perfect 40 inches. The next thing to do is to account for how many shelves you want. The first thing you need to do is take the full measurement of the stand. Then we need to account for the thickness of the 2x4s. In this case, I'm going to have 4 of them, so I need to subtract a total of 6 inches. Then go ahead and divide that number by 3, and that'll give you the total length between each shelf. However, because I left a little area at the bottom for an extra 2x4, I need to subtract a total of 1.5 inches from everything, giving me a measurement of 17.5. It's a little bit of a complicated process with a lot of math involved, but it's necessary to ensure that we get the correct length between each shelf. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and continue to cut the shelves. Since we're going to be having two frames, however many shelves you'll have, you'll want to cut double the pieces. In my case, I ended up having four shelves, so I cut eight pieces total. Following the same process as I did before where I just overlap the pieces, line them up with the saw, and make the cut. Once all 8 pieces are cut, we need to start assembling everything together. Start by laying down the side piece, followed by the top piece. Then for the bottom piece, account for the thickness of that 2x4 that we measured for earlier. Now we need to attach everything together using a drill and some screws. The screws I'm using are some 2 inch multi-purpose construction screws, but any wood screw will work. I recommend pre-drilling the holes, so find a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the thickness of the screw. Then go ahead and line up the top piece with the side piece in the corner. It's important to do this on a flat surface to ensure everything is level. Once you have everything pressed firmly together, go ahead and start pre-drilling the holes. When drilling, it's important to make sure that you go all the way through the first piece and into the second piece. This will help to make sure that the wood doesn't split when we attach the screws. Once the holes are drilled, go ahead and add the screws. This will secure everything together and make sure that it's attached firmly. Then you'll want to repeat this step for the bottom piece. Like I said earlier, we need to account for the thickness of the 2x4, so use another 2x4 to space that before you drill the holes. Then go ahead and pre-drill the holes and add the screws to secure it in place. By doing the top and bottom shelves first, it makes it easier to space the other ones. Anyway, after doing that, go ahead and attach the other side piece. Once the main frame pieces are all attached, go ahead and take that number that we calculated earlier, which in my case is 17.5, and, and use that to space each shelf. 
Then like earlier, go ahead and pre-drill your holes and secure everything with screws. Repeat this process for each shelf as well as repeat the entire process one more time to get two identical frame pieces. It takes a little bit of time, but it's necessary. So with both the front and the back frame complete, the next thing we need to do is the side pieces. Now, unlike the width pieces that are going across, these pieces are going to go from front to back and these can be whatever length you need them to be. So like I said at the beginning, the dimensions for mine, the depth is going to be 14 inches. So I'm gonna cut these pieces 14 inches. Now, depending on how many shelves you have, you're gonna need one for each shelf. I have four shelves, but I'm only gonna make three because the bottom shelf really doesn't need any. That's the reason I left that small gap at the bottom is just in case you wanna add another support down there, you can totally do that. However, my shelf is not gonna be supporting a whole bunch of weight and probably won't need that, so I'm just gonna forego that. But if you have heavier things on that, you definitely wanna add that piece for a little more support. Unlike the other pieces, this is gonna be going front to back with no obstructions, so we don't have to account for anything. Measure out your length and then cut it to size. It never hurts to double check your measurements before making the second cut, so that's exactly what I did. Once I confirmed that, I went ahead and cut the other pieces. Again, following the technique of layering the boards, pushing it flat up against the blade, and making the cut. As for how many you'll need, it'll depend on how many shelves you'll have. In my case, I have four shelves, so I'll need eight of these total. Once you have all the pieces cut, lay down one side of the frame and put the 2x4 in place. Again, it's important to do this on a flat surface to ensure everything is level. Then go ahead and pre-drill the holes and secure it with screws. Repeat this process for each piece underneath each shelf. A little bit of a tip to ensure that everything is level is while you're drilling, make sure to push down on the frame itself. This will make sure that everything is level and that we have no inconsistencies later. Once all the pieces are attached, go ahead and set that piece aside and then get the other frame and lay it down. Then grab the other piece, flip it over, and lay it down on the stand, making sure that the 2x4s are under each shelf. Then go back and pre-drill every hole and secure it with screws. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and set it upright, and that completes the frame. So our frame is now complete. And as you'll notice right now, it might be a bit wobbly, a bit unstable even, and that's completely fine. You can put a few extra two by fours in there just to stabilize it or just put a few more screws in. But once we add the paneling, that should stabilize everything, which is the next thing we need to do. Now, what I use for paneling is I use some eighth inch thick, like plywood type stuff. Again, you can find this at pretty much any home improvement store, but I get mine at Home Depot. And the process for adding it is honestly pretty simple. I usually start with the sides, so I'll take my measurements. In this case, I'm not going all the way back, just covering the width of the two by four. So I'll take the measurement for that, then take it out to a table saw. Alternatively, you could use something like a jigsaw or even a handsaw, but again, this is gonna take a lot more time and the cuts won't be as clean. Using some of that paneling that I showed earlier, I measure and mark for where to cut and then go ahead and run it through the saw. This can be a bit of a dangerous process as this is obviously a very dangerous tool, so be sure to keep your hands away from the saw blade. Anyway, continue running the piece through the saw blade smoothly and evenly to make sure that you get a nice strip. Then go ahead and run it through as many times as you need. In my case, I need four, but these won't quite reach the bottom, so I'm going to cut a couple extra just to be sure. Once the piece starts getting super thin, a little tip is you can use another piece of wood such as a 2x4 to help push the piece against the back. This way your fingers won't get too close to the blade. Additionally, instead of pushing through, you can start pulling through, which again will keep your fingers away from the blade. Once all the strips are cut, go ahead and align them with the stand. I'm going to be overlapping a piece on the front, so I'll account for that before securing it in place with some brad nails. Cutting the other pieces follows basically the same process, except this time you want to account for a little bit of overlapping. What I mean by that is instead of just taking the measurements of the 2x4s and transferring that onto the paneling, you want to account for the paneling that's on the side of the stand. All you have to do is put that on and then take the measurement again, cut the piece, and you should be good to go. As I mentioned earlier, some of the strips aren't quite long enough to reach the bottom. To fix this, I cut a few extra strips, set them along the bottom, then marked for where to cut. After that, I took them over to a saw and cut along the line. Similar situation for the pieces going across. Most of these pieces are a little bit too long, so again, I'll set it in place, mark for where to cut, make my cut, and then bring it back over and attach it. Since the shelf will be going on top of this, I want to account for more of that overlapping that I mentioned earlier. To do this, I'll get another little piece of the paneling, set it on top, and then secure everything with more nails. Then just repeat this process, covering any little part of the stand that you want to. It can get complicated at times, but in the end, the results are worth it. At this point, you may start to notice that there are a few little pieces that kind of stick out, as well as a few pieces where there may be gaps. All of this is not important right now, and we'll fix it up later. Then for the actual shelves, it follows basically the same process as the rest of the paneling. Take your measurements, then take it to a table saw, run it through, then bring it back, lay it in place, and secure it with some nails. 
Go ahead and repeat this process for each shelf. It should be pretty simple as you can just copy the measurements for each piece. At this point, the stand's starting to look pretty good. If you want to cover the 2x4s on the inside, you can. I'm going to because I feel like it looks better, but this is by no means necessary. If you're on a budget and just can't do it, or don't feel like it, there's no reason to do this. It's more of an aesthetic thing, and it'll really look fine either way. Hey there! Okay, so the paneling is now finished. It is kind of a long, tedious process, and sometimes it can even be a bit complicated. And the reason for that is basically just because it's very personal. And what I mean by that is like, you can really do it any way. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Like just cover whatever you wanna cover, leave open whatever you wanna leave open. For example, like I said, you could leave those inner parts open if you want, and don't mind the look of the two by fours, or you can cover them up. You don't have to cover it as much as I did. I just like to do that because it looks nicer. But if you're on a budget or you just don't feel like doing it, there's really no need to. But anyway, once the paneling is done, like I said earlier, there are a few messy parts like a few pieces sticking out or a few holes or a few gaps and stuff and that is the next thing that we're going to take care of so for any little like cracks and stuff using some sort of wood filler is probably the best way to do that just get it on the end of a knife or a paint scraper or whatever you really have just start filling those holes individually i don't have a whole bunch of gaps on mine so i'm just going to forego this process and as for everything else what we're going to do to take care of that is sand it now luckily the specific paneling that i use is a very soft type of wood so it sands really really easily and fast which which makes stuff like this go a lot faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over the whole thing and I'm just gonna sand down all the corners, make them smooth, round, and then flatten anything out. Sanding can get a bit dusty, so make sure to wear your protective gear. As for the sandpaper I'll be using, it really depends on how smooth you want it, but I find 180 grit to be sufficient. If you don't have any power tools to do this, you can do this by hand, however it might take a while. If you do have an electric sander though, it expedites the process substantially and makes things a lot easier. The name of the game here is basically just to go over every surface. You want to smooth all the sharp corners as well as those little areas that are jutting out like I mentioned earlier. Luckily this wood is very soft so it makes for a quick and easy sand. Bigger stands can sometimes take a little bit longer to sand, especially if you have areas that are sticking out quite a bit. I had a couple of those on here, but overall it wasn't too bad. After a little bit of sanding, you'll now have a nice clean stand. The next thing we need to do is stain it. The color I'll be using is dark walnut. I recommend using water-based as opposed to oil-based. I was an idiot and accidentally bought oil-based, but I highly recommend using water-based. In order to apply the stain, you could use a paintbrush or a rag. A lot of people prefer to use rags, but I find paintbrushes to be sufficient. It's really up to personal preference and whatever you find easier. As an alternative to stain, you could also use paint, which will look just as good. I like to use stain though, just to get that natural wood texture. An important thing to note with stain is that a little bit goes a long way, so depending on how dark or light you want it will determine how many coats you'll need. I only wanted one coat, and I also tried to put it on as light as I could. I went over the entire stand, making sure to cover everything. It's also important to wear a mask during this process, as well as doing it in a well-ventilated area, as stains can get pretty smelly. That's one of the benefits of using paint, as well as being able to use something like a paint roller to make this process go faster. However, like I said earlier, I prefer the look of stains. In total, this process took probably about 45 minutes, but eventually I got it done, and the stand was complete. So, now that the stand is stained, I really, really love the look of it. I think the color is a bit darker than I wanted, but I think it'll be fine. Now, there are a few optional things you can do from here. One is that you might want to apply some sort of some sort of polyurethane, and that's okay. You can do that, but then you're going to have to let it sit outside for like two to three weeks just so the smell dissipates. And even depending on the type of stain that you're using, you could even have to let this sit outside for a while. But other than that, it's pretty much finished. Again, unless you want to add some sort of polyurethane to protect it from water, just give it a shine. But other than that, it's done. Now, we just got to move it downstairs and get all the stuff on it and we should be good to go.
there. Thank you guys for watching. I really, really hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. As of right now, I kind of just put a few things on this just to make it feel a little bit more full. And the lighting situation is just temporary. I do have some puck lights coming that I'm going to install in here, but unfortunately those didn't come in time. So I'll post a few pictures and maybe a short once I get this updated. Now, as you can tell, this shelf is pretty empty for the most part. And the reason for that is because I wanted to give myself enough extra space because as of right now, I only have four mantis enclosures actually built. I think I am going to keep the isopods on this setup just because I feel like it looks good, but I'm definitely planning on getting more mantis species as well as I have a couple others that aren't quite big enough to go into an enclosure yet, but will be soon. But again, that is going to do it. If you guys have any questions about the build, make sure to leave those down in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and make sure to hit that smash subscribe button. And I will see you guys next week.